In this tutorial, you will learn the four primary 3D modeling methods that every beginner needs to know. Each of these is used for a specific end result, but there are many overlaps, and all of these four could be used within a single asset creation. So the four modeling methods you need to know are polygonal, subdivision, sculpting, and NURBS. So let's cover each of these in detail so you know what they're used for. And I'm also going to tell you which one is used the most for game development, for game modeling, and that you should focus on learning and mastering first. So the first method is polygonal modeling. In this method, meshes are composed of vertices, edges, and faces. And your meshes can be low poly, you can create them mid poly, or you can create them as high poly, depending on the model and your end result. This method is what primarily used for game development, for game modeling, but it's also used in film, in animation, as well as rendering your portfolio shots. And this is the most common modeling method that you'll be using and the one you should focus on learning first. Now your polygonal models will often start off as a cube, as a cylinder, or a sphere, a single plane, and maybe even a single quad. And then you'll be creating your objects from these primitive shapes. From these polygonal basic primitives. Now you'll find these basic primitive shapes to use to start your polygonal models under create and in my case I'm using Maya. So you would go to create and here you have your polygon primitives. And here are all the basic polygon primitives that you would use to create your objects with or start your models from. So if I let's say I create a cube, make it larger, then if you right click hold on an object you're able to switch to faces, vertices, and edges, and begin modeling from this basic primitive shape. And then in the end, you will end up with a model, a 3D object, that will consist of triangles and quads. So here is an example of a polygonal-based modeling of a, a retro TV set. So if you are creating game assets, props, environments, characters, polygonal modeling is your base creation of a model. This is what you'll be using most of the time. And these are the meshes that you'll be importing into a game engine to use. The second model method that you'll often come across is subdivision modeling. Now, subdivision modeling is an offset of polygonal modeling, as it uses polygonal modeling as its base to then create high poly, high quality meshes. But you begin from polygonal models, from polygonal shapes, just like you do for polygonal modeling. So you use the same cubes, cylinders, and spheres in order to create subdivided models. But the end result of these subdivided models is different. Subdivision modeling is primarily used in film, in animation, in product design, rendering, and high power creation. And these meshes are not often used in games directly, but can be used to create high poly meshes in order for you to bake normal maps and get that detail from the high poly down to a lower poly through a normal map texture. But you usually do not take these subdivided models and export them from Maya or from other 3D modeling packages and import them directly into a game engine because they're way too higher triangle count than what you would need to use in game. Now you could bring these subdivided models into a game engine at a higher poly count, especially if you bring them into UE5 using the Nanite technology, but primarily you don't do this type of workflow. Uh, subdivision modeling is kind of used for a different part of the process and for different end result. Now when you use subdivision modeling, meshes have to be smoothed or subdivided in Maya or whatever modeling package you use. So that means in Maya, you work with a polygonal mesh and then you get to preview your mesh and see how it would look subdivided by using three keys. Three is your smooth mesh preview. And hotkey 2 gives you a low poly cage and a high subdivided preview mesh. So back in Maya, let me go ahead and create a cube, make it larger. And here's what it would look like. So this is your polygonal mesh, just a, a regular polygonal object, which would look normal and you could export this into a game engine and it would look exactly like this. However, if you are modeling your objects using subdivision modeling, you would have to preview your mesh using the uh, 3 hotkey. But whenever you do this, you can see that your mesh collapses. So your mesh has been smoothed out, but because it's modeled improperly at the moment, or we haven't done any modeling to it, subdivision mode actually will collapse your mesh because subdivision modeling requires a different mindset to approach this type of modeling method. 
So if I hit one key, I go back to my polygonal mesh and three gives me the smooth mesh preview. And the two hotkey gives me a combination of both the low poly cage, the polygonal mode, and the smooth mesh preview. So I'm gonna hit one to go back to my polygonal mode. So if you are creating your meshes using subdivision modeling, you have one important thing to consider, which is your meshes require holding edges to prevent your meshes from collapsing. So in the case of this cube, for it to not collapse and be properly subdivided, I would have to insert holding edges next to the corners that I want to retain and not have them collapse. So in this case, I'm just going to quickly use a modeling toolkit and uh, use multi-cut and just simply insert a bunch of holding edges next to the corners where I would, I would want them to retain their shape. So for example, right now if I press three, gives me a smooth mesh preview. You can see that the mesh retains most of the shape except for the areas that where I do not have a holding edge. So let me put a few more. So I have one pretty much in each corner. And if I press three, you can see that it retains the shape of the cube. And uh, the subdivision modeling method for this cube now works because I've inserted those holding edges. So if you were to model anything with subdivision modeling method, you have to switch your mind and you would have to model your objects way differently with a different mindset and different techniques being used than you would with polygonal based modeling. So if I were to open up that retro TV, this is a polygonal mesh. And if I select it and I press three to see what it would look like if this model was subdivided, I would have a lot of problems with this, especially around the areas right here at the top. A lot of the corners and a lot of the mesh would collapse on itself. So here's back to one, here's polygonal mesh. You can see that I have enough detail, but if I were to smooth this out and do the subdivided preview, you can see a lot of this collapses and as, as well as on the back. So if I were to create this television and use the subdivision mesh preview or the subdivision modeling method, I would have to approach way differently as I did for using polygonal method. And it's a whole subset of techniques and principles you would have to implement. But my end result of this television would be a lot better in terms of being rendered out or maybe used for some high quality film work where I need this TV to look not as low poly as it does now, but more realistic. Or maybe I was doing a product design shot and it needs to be rendered out as close to real life as possible. So here's an example of a diving helmet that has been modeled using the subdivision modeling method. So right now, both of these helmets, uh, it, it, they're exactly the same mesh. I've just duplicated. So in order for me to see what this would look like uh, smoothed out, I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and hit three. And you can see that it's switched over to a subdivision mesh preview. Uh, let me disable Alt-5 wireframe and shader. And you can see that I get a higher quality mesh. Everything is very nice and smooth. Uh, there's no collapsing of geometry onto itself. And this creates a higher quality, higher poly mesh that would look really good smoothed out. But again, this mesh right here would not be used in game because it was just way too high poly. And in order to show you uh, the differences of the triangle count between the polygonal mesh that was used to create and then the subdivided mesh is, is immense. The triangle count goes way higher. So actually, let me go ahead and enable the heads up display really quick and enable the poly count. So right here, if I select these meshes right here, my triangle count at the moment is 7900 for the polygonal mode, just a regular polygon mesh, not subdivided. And for this one, if I were to select everything and then press three, you can see that it goes up all the way to 126,000 triangles. So from 7,000, almost 8,000 to 126,000. So as you can see, this is not something that you would do this for every mesh if you were going to use this for a game development. This is just not done. But this could be used for a high poly sculpt in order to take it into ZBrush. Could be used for maybe baking all this smooth detail down to the low poly mesh by generating a normal map. Or it would be again used for a different production pipeline, animation, film, product design. And one last thing I want to mention about subdivision modeling is that most of your models should primarily contain quads with minimal triangles and no end guns. 
Now you could have triangles if they're away from certain areas and you should avoid n-gons because triangles and n-gons on a subdivided mesh tend to collapse your geometry and create creases or pinching in those areas of geometry just like you saw on the retro TV. But this is a very important part of specific production for a specific area of that would require the subdivision modeling pipeline. And it is a very important part that you should eventually learn as well, or at least know how to create some basic meshes with it. The third modeling method is sculpting. Well, technically sculpting is not modeling, but your sculpted mesh does contain triangles. So it is a 3D mesh. But sculpting is uh, often a very important part of the production pipeline in order to create game environment assets. So sculpting is a type of a modeling that creates high poly, high resolution meshes containing millions upon millions of triangles. Now these meshes are not used directly inside the game engine because again there are millions of triangles. However, a case can be made that with uh, UE5 nanites you are allowed to import high resolution very dense sculpted meshes into Unreal Engine and make it run smoothly. But we are sticking with the proven pipeline that has been used for the last 10-15 years. You do not take these high poly sculpted meshes and import them into a game engine to use. And what you do use is you use these sculpted meshes to bake down high poly information from the sculpted meshes down to a low poly mesh in order to get a normal map. And then the normal map contains all the detail from the high poly sculpt, but it's applied to low poly geometry. And then it fakes that illusion that the low poly mesh has all that detail from the high poly. You can also take these sculpted meshes and uh, retopologize them to give you a low resolution, something that could be usable in game. So you sculpt your characters, you sculpt your prop in ZBrush, in Modbox or Blender, something that contains millions of triangles is extremely detailed and then you use the tools provided in that software and then get a lower poly version that could be used and imported into game into a game engine the sculpted meshes are also not used for animation so you're not going to take these high poly sculpts and rig them and animate them you would have to also retopologize them and make them usable to be rigged and animated so the sculpting process is often a part of the production pipeline for a game asset or a character, but then you have to do some extra steps in order to make that mesh usable in game, as well as baking your high poly down to low poly to get that normal map. And the software that's used to create the sculpted meshes are ZBrush, which is the industry standard. Then you have Modbox and Blender also has sculpting tools. And the fourth modeling method is NURBS or spline or curve based modeling. Now these objects are very different from polygonal modeling and these objects are composed of splines and control vertices and not vertices that just faces like polygon or subdivision modeling and NURBS are not used in games and they are primarily used in engineering and industrial design. However, you can create NURBS and then convert them to polygons so they can be used in game and it's often used as a modeling technique to create some very complex surfaces that NURBS provide and they're very good and are very known for. And then you can convert those surfaces to polygons that can be used. So for example, in Maya, if you go to create, here you have NURBS primitives. And these are the ones you would create and then you can convert them to a polygonal object later. But for example, if I, let's create a sphere. Let me make it larger. If I right click on the sphere, I get access to different components than you would for a polygonal box for a polygonal primitive. So you have your control vertices, you have isoparms, you have surface points, and they're very different in how this object works. And again, these are not polygons. So when you create and you select that shape, a NURB primitive, you see that no triangles, faces, edges, verts count shows up because NURBs do not have any of those. So you would not use NURBs to actually model your objects with in order to import them into a game engine. However, you could take this object and uh, go to modify, convert, and you have ability to take your NURB surfaces and convert them to polygons. And now you would have a polygonal object that you have, now you have tri triangle count, your faces, your edges, and so on. 
Now, of course, this sphere is not something you would, uh, you know, you wouldn't create a NURB surface, convert it to a polygon, and then use this because you already have ability to create polygon primitives and a sphere. However, what this could be used for, you know, let me go ahead and create a couple of curves and then show you a more complex surface you can convert NURBs to polygons. That would make more sense of why you would maybe use this NURB modeling as a way, as a modeling technique for your poly polygonal or subdiv subdivision modeling. I'm going to go to create curve tools and I'm just going to create an EP curve. Just draw a curve. And I'm just going to take this curve, duplicate it. Uh, let me go ahead and modify it. So curves are part of NURBS. But what I can do is I can uh, create a surface between two curves. And this is what is known as spline based modeling or curve based modeling. Basically, you could create profiles using these curves, and then you can loft them, you can revolve around them, and then you can create complex geometry, complex nerve geometry between them, between different splines or curves. So I'm, let me just go ahead and maybe modify a little bit more. Create a little bit more interesting shape. And now I can take both of these curves and then go to surfaces, and you have a lot of options to take these surfaces and uh, there's a lot of tools that you can create geometry in between these curves. But I'm just going to do a quick loft. And loft just simply takes two more curves and creates a surface between them. And actually, let me double check. Let me go to loft options. Make sure everything is reset to default. And loft. And here I just created a NURB geometry surface between those two curves. And then what I can do now is take this NURB surface and then convert it to a polygon. Go modify, convert. Let's take a look at the options really quick. And I'm just going to change tessellation method general. I want count and I want quads. And I'm just going to input a count of let's say 500. And then hit apply. So now I've taken the NURB surface and I created a polygonal surface. So this is a great way to take something that you wouldn't necessarily use to model, but create complex surfaces and then convert them into a polygon shape, a polygon model that you can actually use for a game within the game engine. So these are the four primary 3D model methods you should know about. Focus on polygonal modeling first, master that, and then you can explore subdivision as well as get into sculpting. And only use NURBS as a modeling technique to get more complex shapes and then convert them to polygons. Now, for those of you who want to begin to learn polygonal modeling from scratch using the industry standard software Maya, then I have a very in-depth and extensive tutorial course, Maya Foundation, the home study course. It'll teach you how to get started with Maya, how to model, and how to UV. You can download right now by clicking the link in the description on tiny little box that popped up, or you'll find the link within the blog post.